If you're anything like me, you started off this season at rank six veteran like everybody else and quickly moved on to rank seven and then rank eight. And now we're all stuck at rank nine because grandmasters have not come out as of the time of this recording. But then I got curious, what is the rank 11 requirements? Well, I've got the titles, I've got the score, I've got the accommodations, I've got the Conqueror title, I can guild it this season, but I have not completed the most recently released dungeon solo. Oh no! <laughs> the last time that I solo flawless a dungeon was way back when Prophecy was new? <laughs> so, uh, I've not even tried Spire, but I guess we're gonna have to do it. I'm gonna say right off the top that this is not a step-by-step -step guide on how to solo Spire of the Watcher. I'm sure you've seen plenty of those guides already. This is for the person who is stuck on Akalos or Persis. Now, I haven't watched all of these guides because, yeah, that'd be a lot, but the ones I have seen feature a lot of things like Weakened Clear or Solo Operative or Linear Fusion Rifles, all of which either don't exist or are bad now. So I decided to put together a loadout that is consistent and works really well throughout the entire breadth of this dungeon, not to mention it works for someone like me who has a small, smooth, jelly bean-like little brain. Let's talk guns, arguably the most important part of this loadout, which makes it so consistent. We want Riptide with lead from gold and either Chill Clip or Vorpal Weapon. We want Hollow Denial with lead from gold and either Killing Tally or Repulsor Brace. And then we want the GOAT, Thunderlord. Now, why am I saying this is the best loadout? It's not the most damage. There are guns that do more damage than Thunderlord. But what do we want? We don't want the most damage, we want consistency. We want to hit every damage phase. We want to always have ammo in all of our guns. We want to be able to use Thunderlord to kill the sniper harpies at the Oculus encounter, or use it for ad clear if we get ourselves into a jam. We want Riptide to break Akalos's eyes as well as chunking down Minotaurs. We want Hollow Denial for breaking the void shields and also shooting all of the little nodes and stuff. Overall, I found this loadout to be the most consistent. With Thunderlord, I can promise you, if you hit your shots and you have your catalyst, Akalos is gonna be six phases, maybe seven tops, and it's consistent. And then once we get to the fourth phase, we're gonna switch to solar in our well, and for that, we're gonna use Grand Overture because that missile barrage is amazing and easy four phases. So what's the build? We're gonna be on Warlock, why? consistency. The first three encounters stick to void. You can put on devour intrinsically. You could use grenades to get devour. You can weaken enemies up and punch him to get devour and you'll live forever and all you got to do is get a kill. Plus it has weakened grenades which are really great for Akalos to do more damage to him. It gets a Nova Bomb for free damage. Then you get to Persis, the final boss, and just being in your well gives you so much damage because supers do extra damage to him and a warlock in his own well, all of your weapon damage counts as super damage, I guess. I don't get it, but Persis is a super easy four fees, four fees, <laughs> four phase in your well as a warlock. And this is coming from a Titan main. I play Titan for everything end game, always. But in here, I'm going warlock. Hunter, I love Hunter. I love being an invisible sneaky boy, but uh, I gotta go Warlock, man. But that's enough of me jibber jabbering. How about let's get to the first boss and I'll switch to commentary when we're there.
All right, we're switching over to commentary mode. So as you can see, about a third of his life is gone, a little bit less, but if I was really focusing on my arc surges and my armor charges, I would have easily got there. But like I said, this is my, I don't want to have to keep track of a million things build. <laughs> so if you do focus on that stuff, you'll do more damage than I just did. Cause I don't think I had armor charge for either one of those, but this is basically the start. You just grab Arctrician, shoot the four nodes, and then I always like to go in the same order. I fell down here because I'm a big dummy. <laughs> the uh, node I want to start on is the one underneath the platform where I killed the Minotaur, but I got lost momentarily. So I like to start with this one because it's one of the easiest and safest ones. <laughs> well, they're all safe, if I'm being honest, but it's, uh, it's just so simple to do the same route every time, and then you always know when you're going to go into the next damage phase. And I definitely recommend not running across the top of those things, because that boss can swoop by and knock you into the pit. It's happened to me a number of times. <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend staying underneath as much as you can, unless he's super far away. But as you can see, I'm just connecting nodes, but I'm not connecting the fuel rods because as soon as you connect those, it spawns those sniper harpies with the, the big purple lasers. We don't want those. <laughs> so we're going to stay underneath and we're not going to connect fuel rods. And again, since I'm on this void build, if I ever get into a jam and I need health, I know I can just throw a devour grenade and get it back. Shot a boom. Didn't even need it, but whatever. I got it anyways. <laughs> and if you're being a speedy boy, you can obviously connect all of these with one artrician, which is great. Just keep on hustling. Now, now that I know I'm on the last one, I know this is when I got to connect the fuel rod, which will start summoning all of those snipers. They're not really snipers, but they have super long range. You know what I mean. So I'm going to connect these first three fuel rods, and then I'm going to kill all of those with Thunderlord. No more snipers will spawn when you connect the final node where you do damage. So you're free to go after you kill them here, and they won't respawn. Like I said, you could use other things. I find this to be very consistent damage. I always have ammo because I run a double special. I can use Thunderlord to help with this ad clear. I know. I know you could snipe them or use a scout or whatever. Oh, got in trouble. Devour grenade. Ah, uh, there you go. What do you know? Full health again. And I don't bother with a well here or whatever because I can get the free damage and the weakened grenade. And you can't really just sit in your well unless you're using something other than Thunderlord. So if you really want to use your well here and switch to something else, go for it. But I really love this loadout, and it's made this so much more consistent. So now that we're on the final node, I go ahead and connect it, reload everything, get ready to use my empowering rift, and riptide to shred the eyes. And whatever eyes are left over, use hollow denial, because it also shreds eyes. Rift, grenade, riptide, riptide. Riptide, drag it up and down, and all around. Finish it off with Hollow Denial. As soon as all the eyes are done, jump up in the air, throw my bomb, pull out the Thundy, then walk along the edge to not fall in the first hole. And then the second hole, when he's about to blow, you can hop into it for safety so you don't get knocked back like it did in the second phase there. Shazam. Missed out on that half second damage, but, uh, you know, totally safe. And then we're just back to reset again. And again, he's about half health now after three phases. So this, you know, if I was focusing on armor charges and all that, it would have been a six phase instead of a seven. You could do that if you want. You could really build into armor charge and arc weapon surge. But I didn't. Oh, well. And that's all she wrote for Oculos. Now it's time to move on to Persis. I'm going to skip this next traversal section. It's easy. Just, you know, be smart. For Persis, we're going to switch over to using the well and fusion grenades, mainly because I want to get the fusion grenade healing. And then we switch over to Grand Overture because that missile barrage is amazing. Also, I'm terrible at sequencing on Warlock. So if you're better at fusion grenades and have a better build, go for it. But this one worked for me. It should be a four phase every time if you are not small brain like me. 
for these rooms, I don't really have any recommendations other than just stay away from the boss as much as you can, stay away from supplicants, keep moving. And I just keep going in circles and circles and circles around these rooms until I get all of my dots connected. Lure the boss into the main room, then go into the boss room, connect some stuff. Lure the boss into the boss room, go back into the main room, connect some stuff. Just keep running in circles until you get everything connected. Here I'm on my last two. Make sure the boss is in here before we start damage. I see him there. Connect the final node. Then get the heck out of here. I have plenty of time on my electrician, so I know I don't need it. But if you do need a refresh, make sure you go grab that before you get here. <laughs> I'd say you have about 10 seconds or so left on it. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bing. And then we go up here. I remember to put on my arc surges even though I don't have armor charge right now because I was running a different build earlier. Slam down your well. Throw a grenade, unleash the barrage, which I wasn't prepared for because I was busy switching armor because I'm small brained. And because I don't have any armor charge, this is going to be a five phase for me because I'm not focusing that, which if you do, if you're paying attention, it's a four phase every time. It's a lucky thing. I had my pieces. Your pieces? My gun. Oh. Right. Anyway, I started blasting. Bang! Wow. Bang! Oh, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang! Try to shoot them in the back. But I don't want so good either. Anyway, you guys all think I'm a hero. And I'll accept that responsibility. Like I said, because I'm terrible at sequencing and terrible at keeping my armor charge up, <laughs> five phase. This is what after a damage phase looks like. I come back into the main room where because I'm running double special, I have tons of bricks everywhere. And I start loading up more missiles and just playing it safe. This room after a damage phase is completely safe. The boss stays behind that little wall there. And you can just hang out in here, go grab a sandwich, use the restroom if you need to, whatever you got to do. But it's a very safe location after every damage phase. While I'm here, I snipe these these big guys. I don't know why I was letting this guy scare me so much. I think it's just because I was so close to finishing. But he doesn't really do that much damage. But I got real scared and I was hiding. I was I was trying my ass off right now not to die, even though I was in literally no danger. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, he's shooting at me. Look out. Oh man. But you know, better safe than sorry. Now this is where things are going to get hectic. I see the boss chilling there with his group of ads. I was looking here to make sure there was no sneaky supplicants right near the door or anything. There weren't, so I was like, okay, I can delete this guy, throw a grenade on him, and then you have to get into motion. This is where everything speeds up. Collect the ammo, grab the electrician, throw the grenade on the supplicants. Run through the middle, connect all the dots, and then escape out the other side. I hear supplicants coming, so I got them boogie. Icarus stash of safety, get out of here, leave me alone. And now this room is no longer a safe harbor. Things will start coming in here now because, you know, uh, we're uh, the, the whole space is active again. These doorways don't provide a ton of safety, but they provide enough if you need a, a sort of safe place to hang out and, and recuperate for a second. But as soon as you see the boss, well, you gotta skedaddle. And that's what I just keep doing over and over and over. Just keep running in circles, connect a dot here, connect a dot there. Just keep spinning the boss back into the main room, then back into the boss room. It's a really long encounter because it's really hard to just do it all at once, but this is the safest way I found to do it, is just keep it moving and uh, keep luring the boss into one area and then the other and just stay away from them. Connect the final node. I noticed my electrician's a little low, so I decided to get it again. Not sure if I would have needed it or not, but again, better safe than sorry. It looks like it would have been right at the wire, so I'm glad I grabbed it. 
connect the five dots again place the well shoot a barrage bob's your uncle that's all there is to this it's really simple really consistent and not nearly as difficult as i thought it was going to be now i'm not saying it's actually easy but it is doable anyone can do it if i can do it you can do it if you're an end game player and you have this equipment if you don't i'm sorry but this is the only way i know how to do this consistently thanks for watching see ya